Okay, in this video, I'm going to solve the rocket loses bolt on takeoff problem from the homework. Uh, this is one of the ones, the Anderson videos, where he's got this cool transparent screen in front of him and he's writing on it, and somehow it comes out the right direction for her, for us and for him. Um, he's writing normally, and I'll give you a hint, he's not actually left-handed, he's right-handed. Um, the computer is flipping it around so that it looks right for him and for us. Uh, that would be nice if I had that. I don't. Um, Actually, all I really need is the transparent screen. Anyway, so let's let's do this problem. Um, in the actual situation, you've got a pizza chef that is like tossing dough and tossing it up in the air and spinning it, and a piece flies off and goes up in the air and comes back down again. We're supposed to figure out how fast it's going when it hits the ground. Okay, so I need some data from the problem. Francesco, the pizza chef, is six foot three inches tall, and the pizza dough is traveling one meter per second vertically when it leaves hit their hands. So first we've got the pizza chef and they are six foot three, six foot three inches tall. And the bit of pizza dough initially has a velocity of one meter per second straight up. That's J hat. And then we know it comes back down again and hits the ground splat. And the question is, what's the velocity when it hits? Okay, well first we need to set up a coordinate system for the problem. And let's say that positive j hat is up. That means that the initial velocity of that little bit of piece of dough is one meter per second j hat. And um, we have an initial height of that pizza dough before it uh, goes off on its own, and uh, that it, that height is six foot three. So the initial height is six foot three inches j hat, which is not really a very convenient unit system. So I'm going to need to convert that into metric before I'm finished. But for the moment, I'm just going to leave it as a variable as the initial height. Okay, so. My favorite method for solving any problem is to first draw a velocity time graph and then to think about what that velocity time graph tells me. So velocity time. So I've got an initial positive velocity and then gravity is going to slow it down as it goes up because the gravity, the acceleration from gravity is pointing downwards and the velocity is pointing upwards, those two will cancel each other out, or gradually cancel each other out so that it slows down. And then the acceleration and the velocity will point in the same direction, so it'll get faster and faster on the way back down. So you're going to see a line that looks like that, that is decreasing in magnitude for the velocity, and then it's going to increase after that, but it's going to be a constant slope. Okay, well, what's um, the equation of that line? Well, the equation of that line is velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time, because that's always what the equation of, always what a, what a velocity equation looks like if the acceleration is constant. Um, you can see there in there the y equals b plus mx of that line. Okay. Uh, I'm not even really going to put in numbers for the moment. I'm just going to say the velocity at later times is equal to initial velocity um, plus gt. And I'm going to note over here that g is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. J hat, because that's the direction of the acceleration. Okay, so we're going to use that to figure out um, how fast it's going when it gets down to the ground. So where on this graph does it get to the ground. That would be over here. Whatever time this is, is the time of the hit. And this velocity right here is the thing that I'm looking for. So I want to figure out what is the velocity when it gets there. I need to know how long it's going to take to get to the ground in order for me to figure that out. Okay, well, there's a couple things you could do. You could draw the position time graph and use it to figure it out. You could figure out the, the position the position equation and use that to figure out what time it gets to the ground, and then use that to figure out the velocity when it gets to the ground. Or you can uh, calculus it 
and you can integrate. So basically what we're saying is the area under this curve where the green part is positive and uh, let's make it red. The red part is negative. The total area there is going to be the displacement because the area under a velocity curve is the displacement. So writing that out in equation form, you would get the displacement is equal to the integral of the velocity over the time frame. And we're going to use that to figure out how fast it's going when it gets to the ground. All right, so what's the displacement that I want? Okay, the displacement is going to be from 6 foot 3 inches down to 0. So I want a displacement of negative the height of Francesco. So negative h goes right there. And then on the other side of the equation, I'm going to have the integral. The integral from 0 up to the time of the hit, and I don't know what that time is yet, so I'm going to have to figure that out, of the velocity function, vi plus gt dt. Okay, so I need to figure out that integral. So I've got negative h equals vit plus 1 half gt squared evaluated between 0 and t of the hit. Okay, this looks fine. So I'm going to substitute in the time of the hit, positive, and then subtract the, when the time is 0. The 0 part is going to be 0 because this term is going to be 0 and that term is going to be 0. So this is going to work out to be negative h equals vit hit plus one half g t hit squared. Okay, so I need to figure out, seems like I'm going to have to figure out what the time of the hit is in order to solve this. So to do that, I'm, I'm basically taking this quadratic equation, a parabola, and figuring out what are the times that make this equation true. Okay, so if I want to make that equation true, let's go back to our, uh, our algebra techniques. How do you figure out what value of the variable makes a quadratic equation true? Um, use the quadratic formula. So let's put it into, into standard form. We would have 1 half g t hit squared plus the initial t hit plus h equals 0. That's your standard form. So we've got the A is 1 half G, and the B is the V initial, and the C is the height. So use those to figure out at what moment in time um, the, um, the piece of pizza dough will hit the ground, because that's the moment in time that's going to make this equation true. Okay, so t hit is going to equal uh, negative b, so negative v sub i, plus or minus the square root of b squared, v initial squared, minus 4ac, 4 times g over 2, c is h, all divided by 2a, which is 2 times a half g, which is G. Okay, I gotta simplify this to be able to figure out um, uh, what that, that time is going to be. So time of the hit is equal to negative v sub i plus or minus the square root of v i squared minus uh, looks like, looks like the four and the two simplify to two minus 2gh over g. Okay, that I think is enough pure algebra without any numbers because I'm not really sure how to get a result out of that. I do notice there's a plus or minus there. That plus or minus means there's two different solutions for when the time, uh, for what time will make that equation true. Okay, 
That happens because if you actually did a graph of the position versus time, you'd get a parabola that looks sort of like this. It goes up and back down again. So that's leaving Francesco's hands going up in the air and then coming back down. So one of those times that you're, we're going to get from this quadratic is going to be the time of the hit right there. The other one will be what you would get if you went kind of backwards in time and extended that parabola over here. That other solution is not the one we want because that's a solution that comes from the parabola but it isn't really what physically happened. So we have to think about the results and decide which of the two solutions is the one that makes the most sense. Okay, so let's use this. Uh, we'll put some numbers in and we'll figure out. What... Okay, so uh, let me move things around a little bit so we can see my equation and my calculator at the same time. And okay, I've got to put that equation in with the numbers that are in the problem. So let me make this a little bit bigger. And okay, the V initial was one meter per second. Cool. And let me make that bigger still. The initial was one. The G is negative 9.8. And the height was six foot three for me. So I'm gonna have to convert that into a more convenient unit. unit. So six foot three is six feet plus three over 12 feet uh, times 12 inches per foot. So that's 75 um, inches times 2.54 centimeters per inch. So that's 190.5 centimeters divided by 100, 1 1.905 meters. Okay, so I've got all my variables put in there, the velocity, the gravity, and the height. And next, I'm going to put in my quadratic formula. So I want a fraction, and I do v sub i plus square root of v sub i squared minus 2gh divided by g. And I get negative 0.733. And if I do a minus there, what do I get? I get 0.529. Um, and actually, something doesn't quite seem right about that. So let me look back at this. And oh, I realize I forgot the minus sign in front of the negative piece of i. So let's put that there. Aha, I get negative 0.73, I get 0.733 if I have a minus sign there, and I have negative 0.529 if I have a plus sign there. Okay, so um, the negative result is the one that doesn't really make sense. That's the one that comes from the left side of that parabola. And that's the positive one, positive 0.733 is the one that, um, fits for going forward in time. And notice I, I had the g as negative 9.8, so that there's a negative hidden in there, which is why this, this works out to be the bigger number. Okay, so it's 0.733 seconds um, is the moment that it hits the ground. And then I'm going to have to use that to figure out how fast it's going. So the time of the hit is 0.733 seconds. And that means the velocity of the hit is one um, minus 9.8 times 0.733 because I'm using the velocity as the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. So, I'm going to use that, and I'm going to get 1 um, plus g times 0.733, and I get negative 6.18 meters per second. So negative 6.18 meters per second. And I can use the mastering site to check my work. Put in 6.18, negative 
six six point one eight meters per second and submit and oh that's not right Ooh, it's giving me the helpful hint of checker science um, what did it ask for it asked for the speed not the velocity okay so I don't need that minus because instantaneously the value of this the speed is the same as the value of the instantaneous velocity at a particular moment uh, there we go and I must I rounded slightly differently it actually said to use three significant figures and if you look back at my value for g I only use two significant figures so because I rounded the g off a little bit that's going to cause this result to be slightly different g is actually 9.81 like that so that changes this result just a tiny bit which is enough for it to notice that I rounded differently than they did uh, okay, so there is an algebraic solution for um, the pizza dough question. Uh, I'll post uh, a link for this video and this PDF so that you can take a look at it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.